both of these teams come to this in high spirits with the visitors playing their first home game of the season with a thumping win over Nottingham while Amtil picking up a historic win over the, over Cornish Pirates at the Menai. But the big question is which of these sides can continue that momentum and kick on as we approach the final three games of the season for these two sides. There's a change in the front row with Sam Wainwright back in, bringing it to an average age of 21.6 in that front row. And alongside his fellow Saracens dual register player Sam Crean, who made his Saracens debut alongside in September 2019. There's changes at the flanks with Billy Johnson making his first start of the season in for Alex Humphrey. While Joe Burst is given a week off with Jack Arthur making his first start of the season. Scrum half Matt Marsh starts for the first time since the loss to Coventry earlier in April. And Joe Roberts' return to Scarlets means there's a start for Josh Hallett, another Scar uh, Saracens dual register player. He's looking to prove himself as his last start came in the loss against Ealing a few weeks ago. Advantage coming for the visitors as well. And it gets played quickly by Green, who just accelerates over the halfway line. And that's Jack Arthur bringing him down. Is Cook brought down? Yes. That's uh, Ollie Stone looking to get an attack. Brown trying to intercept, but he's opened the doors for Jack Roberts and breaking away is Tom Williams. He'll go away. He's got Matt Marsh in front of him, but Williams should get there first, rolling over the line and giving Jersey the opening score after just eight minutes of play. Just to double check with the lines, it's in, and it is Jersey who really deservedly in front and these opening minutes, opening up Amtil and taking the first try of the afternoon. That was quite unfortunate for Amtil, I think. Um, I thought their defence their defense there was really good. I thought the nine, Matt Marsh, managed to tackle him in touch, but the, the line judge said no. Um, but yeah, from Jersey, it was good interplay between the two players, and yeah, really good. Beckett. Going on the outside Love to Johnson, the and then it comes in to Will Foster, play, and he will score his second try and do home games for Amtil. Foster found the space on the outside. It was the wonderful hands of Beckett and Johnson, who were just playing Ole rugby out there, and Will Foster drawing Amtil level and with an opportunity to go ahead. I mean, Charlie Beckett, he might as well be called a Fijian now because his offloads are everywhere. He did the one against uh, Hartbury for their win and he's just done another one now. So, I mean, he's, he's playing well so far. And so, yeah. We said before it was about the expansive play of Jersey, but you give Amtil an inch of space and they will truly take a mile. And that is exactly what Will Foster did into his level. And you can add another one to the Great tally. Great kick. Amtil take the lead after 24 minutes of play. 7-5 to the home side, grabbing their opportunity with both hands. Well, this time Jersey taking a taking a leaf out of Amtil's neighbor with a quick line out and it comes into Matty Williams who knows how to run. He's put it into the hands of Scott Van Breda. Jersey are going to respond immediately with a score from the fullback Van Breda. He was the assist king on the island last week and this time he crosses the line himself. The South African putting Jersey back ahead within seconds of them losing the lead. And at 7-10, there's a chance to extend that lead even further. That launch play just then, it basically just epitomises what Jersey like. And that's just literally just quick ball, use, it, use everyone in the team and get to the, get to the width. And then just like you just saw there, they just scored. Uh, so yeah. This time, Brendan Cope finding the mark. He's got his sights set truly now. That line-out goes really long and it comes inside to Tom Williams. He scored that first try, breaking past one try. Stopped by Brown. Grimmelby getting to the foot, but Dan Barnes getting his foot onto it, trying to chase it down and get on the line, which he does. The centre scored his first try for the club following his move from London Scottish against Nottingham last week. And now he's got a second in two games, Dan Barnes. Off the back of that, I, I thought I saw a knock on there by the 12. Um, so I'm pretty shocked that she gave it away. Oh, actually, actually, we have a turnover. So we've had a knock on in the process of that. I'm assuming it was Tom Williams. If we can get a replay of that, we'll have a look at it. But it's going to be a scrum to Amtil. Well, goodness me, got away with one there. Well, Dan Barnes was the man who got the touch onto it with his foot. He's put it on the line, but looks like that's been taken as our knock-on. Well, you can't, you can, no, you can't.
take Ansel out of the equation even when they've conceded a try. Oh, 100%. 100%. They're going to look now to fire a shot here. Some big collisions we've had so far this afternoon. Number one at the line out there between Blackmore and Jones. The, well, pin for counter Mall from Jersey pushing Ansel back a few metres. And actually, it turns over possession as well. Gray picking it up. And now another counter at Stoneham just trying to take them on himself. Barnes. Quick hands into Roberts, his centre pairing. Now into Parker, who's managed to find a bit of space. Little lovely offload into Dan Barnes. This time, Dan Barnes finding the space. And this time, Dan Barnes scoring. He got his try disallowed earlier on, but the centre has certainly crossed the line this time. That is definitely two tries in two games for the centre. That is definitely the two tries in about 10 minutes for Jersey. And it is three tries to put them 7-17 ahead. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Um, I think there the Amtel defence just fell asleep, really. Um, everyone didn't see uh, what the tight edge was doing, and he just managed to run through a gap, give a massive offload into the 12, and he ran on good um, sticks for the try. But I know he's full of running, he's full of that aggression, he knows those deep runs. He did it for London Scottish last season as well, and that's why he's got that third try on the board. Points in by Brendan Cope, takes us to 7 19 to the visitors. The work getting harder for the home side. This is probably Antil's longest sort of spell of possession, actually, I think, throughout the game, but they're using it well, and now here comes Johnson. Takes up quickly by Beckett, who's up on his feet after going down. He gets ever so close to the try line. Nice it goes Crean. Comes out to Grimmelby, spilled out of his hands and kicked away. Now there's a chase on between Anderson and Van Breda, and also. Foster, who gets there, turns brilliantly, getting away from Owen. Amtel get another chance, kick over the top from Brian. Now oh, Will Brown chasing no this one, one down, there's no one there. Will Brown, could he be in for another try? He's got to get it on the ground, and the winger gets his... That's great close. He gets his third try of the season, and he puts Amtel well and truly back into this fight. 12-19 conversion to come. Well, when Will Brown gets space like this, nobody else is winning that ball. Oh, 100%. I think that just shows exactly the work that Sam Bryan puts in, make sure his kicks are spot on, and just then all the extras he puts in uh, away on the training field just pay dividends there, and he managed to help uh, the winner score the try there. He's on 39 points now for the season with Oak conversion. Solid kick now. And Solid. Amtil within five points of Jersey Reds. <laughs> Whenever you watch Amsil, you're always on the edge of your seat, and this is no different. Go away, let me play. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd been at that game, Josh. <laughs> no, that's the scrum turning again. Will be a penalty to Jersey at the turn. Oh, and it's getting caught out again. Humphrey right in the middle of it again. I think if they do get a uh, penalty in this area of the field, they will probably go for the points rather than try and go to the corner, just because Amtil have the opportunity, are so good at coming back in the last five ten minutes of games and stealing the win the competitive level the intensity of it clear for all to see in a well, what would have been a well matched game were it not for the error cut I mean, just as you were saying oh 100 uh, so uh, loads of knock-ons and the penalty count as well is is uh, really high for Amtel they've got 16 16 penalties uh, and I don't think in any game you play at any level giving away 16 penalties will keep you in the game Elliot going out to the left looking for Cope looking for Barnes he's looking for a second try and he's got it the number 12 has been superb for the visitors in attack and defense and kicking and he deservedly gets a brace and that will be that I think Jersey with the bonus point at Dillon and Park. He's just coming on that short ball off the nine and carrying hard, chucking it up. And I think that's exactly what they've done all day. Uh, when it's time to move the ball wide, they move the ball wide. When it's time to keep it tight and uh, just chuck it up, that's what they've done. And that's how they've just got that try there. They need to uh, get to the width. Well, that final conversion from Brendan Cope takes us to the end of our match here at Dillon and Park. Jersey Reds are the ones who continue their winning run. It's two from two games for them. Amtil tried to keep themselves in it, but that penalty count just held them back. And it is Jersey who will fly home 
and will be flying high.